Hello, Professor Honky Tonk here. This is the first in a series of workshops meant to teach improvisation in the country western style. Now there are three main contexts in which we use improvisation in the country western band. First of all, there are intros, turnarounds, and outros. These are parts of the form that are usually played by a lead instrumentalist such as the fiddle or the steel, maybe lead guitar, or piano. And the introduction and turnaround usually consist of the same musical material, which is going to be the end of the song. So taking the last four bars of the song and turning it into an intro or turning it into a turnaround, which then seamlessly sets up the entry of the singer. Now, there are some intros and turnarounds that players tend to play verbatim, some classic kind of iconic licks that a lot of players learn note for note. But many other intros and turnarounds are going to be improvised on the bandstand by the players. So sometimes if somebody calls a tune and somebody's unfamiliar with the tune on stage and they need to play an intro, they'll ask someone in the band, hey, sing me the last four bars of that one. And then they're able to take that melody and improvise around it and create a, a nice logical intro for the song. Outros are usually uh, going to be improvised on the bandstand there are some songs that have you know really uh clear-cut classic outros but a lot of the time you're going to hear a lead player kind of improvise into the outro setting up the last chord the second context in which we use our improv skills is playing fills behind a singer in this context the instrumentalist creates sort of a back and forth dialogue with the singer it is important not to overplay when playing fills and to allow the vocal part to stay in the musical limelight. Now the third context for improv is playing a solo over the chord changes, which we also sometimes refer to as taking a ride. This is the context in which instrumentalists are best able to display their prowess and show off some real cool licks. However, some of the most effective solos tend to be more melodic and less technical. There are many different approaches to learning how to improvise, and I'll use many of these in the various improv workshops that I'll produce for this website. For this first workshop, we will explore the concept of using a small set of notes as a catalyst for creativity. So here's the chord progression for this exercise. This basic progression of one to five back to one is often encountered in various forms of country western music. Today we'll be in the key of G, but I encourage you to try to play these patterns through all 12 keys. All right, so the name of the game in this particular exercise we're gonna be doing in this improv workshop is going to be doing more with less. So we're gonna limit the amount of notes we have available to us to starting out with only three notes. Okay, rather than having the whole scale to choose from, we're gonna use a set of three notes. So for the one chord, we're gonna stick with the third, the fifth of the chord, and then the sixth. So those are that's a nice colorful note set. Notice I'm leaving out the root. Playing the root note uh, in improv a lot of the time is kind of gonna be a redundant note because it's gonna be played uh, by the bass probably at any given uh, point in the song. So for the five chord, we're gonna use the seventh, the ninth, and the third. So our two note sets we have available on the one chord, third, fifth, and sixth, and then to get to the five chord, we just take that same pattern, that third and then up a second, and then move it a step higher in the scale. Okay, so those are gonna be our note choices we have for the one chord B, D, E, for the five chord C, E, F sharp. So here's what exercise 1A is gonna sound like. All right, so exercise 1B, we're going to build a little improv solo by taking those 
two sets of three notes, B, D, E on the one chord, excuse me, B, D, E, C, E, F sharp on the five chord, and using it to build a little solo. So simple patterns, using rests, not feeling like you have to play the whole time, and just thinking about simple, singable patterns rather than pulling out all the chops, trying to play just simple melodic motifs. All right, so for 1C, we're going to take our three-note set and add one chromatic neighbor note to each set of three to make a set of four. So instead of B, D, E, the third, the fifth, and the sixth, we're going to add the flatted third first. You can also think about that as a sharp nine is another music theory way to look at it. Don't worry so much about the theory, the sound's the important part. So it gives us a little bit of bluesy dissonance there. Then when we get to the uh, five chord, we go seven to nine, flatted three to three. So we're going to sound like this. And then turn it around. All right, so to close out the set of exercises, 1D allows us to take those four note sets from 1C and then put them into a little improv solo. All right, so it's just a matter of taking those notes, putting them in a new order, putting them in a new rhythm, and you've got yourself an improv solo. All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate exercises 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D on some various instruments, starting with the mandolin, then the guitar, then the lap steel, then the pedal steel. So uh, this gives you a chance to maybe woodshed along a little bit, see some different solo ideas. I encourage you to practice these uh, on your own in many different keys and use the backtrack that I have available on ProfessorHonkyTonk.com and this backtrack's also available on my YouTube channel. So let's check it out, starting with the mandolin.
Alright, so that closes out the first improv workshop. I hope you found it to be beneficial and maybe a little bit of fun. I had fun putting it together for y'all. So please like, subscribe, and be on the lookout for more improv workshops coming soon. So this is Professor Honky Tonk signing off, reminding you that the record is the textbook. Happy practicing. <laughs>